Okay. Okay, welcome back everybody. Um in our last lecture we talked about different statistical process control tools like uh histogram, like Pareto chart, uh scatter diagram, and I know that lastly we talked about control charts. And the reason that we want to use control charts because we want to see the variation in the system. We want to see the type of the variation in the system and we want to see how much variation we have in the system or in the, in the process. So in this lecture, we will be talking about something more specific. So this lecture will be about control charts for variables and as we can remember we we talked about four different control charts under variables x bar which is our average range individual and mr which is the moving range chart so initially we will be covering uh two control charts and those control charts are x bar chart and R charts. So this is the two that we will be covering for this lecture. And for the next lecture, next lecture, we will cover I chart and MR chart. So let's go back to X bar and R chart. And X bar an R chart is a type of statistical control chart to monitor the variation of a process or the variation of a system. When we have continuous data, that part is, that part is important only when we have continuous data. The X bar chart shows how the mean changes over time and the R chart shows how the range of the subgroup changes over time. Again, the X bar chart shows how the mean or the average changes over time. And the R chart displays how the range, um, how the range changes over time. So we just mentioned something about subgroups. To be able to effectively build a control chart for X bar and R, our subgroup size need to be larger than two and smaller than eight, ideally. So you may ask, what happens when the subgroup size is larger than eight? Then we can replace R chart with a standard deviation chart. But I have but I want to make an important point here. Almost 90-95% of all processes out there can be represented by using IMR and X bar and R charts. So this is why we're not going to talk about standard deviation or S chart in this class because I already know that I can take care of 90-95% of my problems with those four charts. And again, those four charts are X bar, R, I, and MR chart. So speaking of control charts, how do we draw X bar and R control charts? I'm gonna scroll it down. So control charts for variables, and but this is specifically talking about X bar and R charts. Okay, so we already mentioned that you know X bar is it shows it shows the mean, uh, it shows how the mean changes over time, and R chart shows how the range changes over time and individual and moving rain charts is something that we will cover in next lecture all right how do we draw how do we draw an x bar and r control chart well first of all we need to identify how many sub subgroups do we have we want to see if it is more than two or less than eight again if it is if it is more than eight then we can 
use S chart instead of R chart. But as, as I just mentioned, I mean, we can take care of 90, 95% of our problems with this four chart. So there is no need to go over another chart because, because if I can solve 95 90, 95% of my problems out there, I think, I think I'm good. I don't need another chart to, to help me to, um, to, to help me to solve, solve my problem. So again, S chart is, is, is something that we won't be covering. Okay. So, I mean, first of all, we find how many subgroup, subgroups do we have? And if, if it is more than two and less than eight, then, uh, then that means we are eligible to build an X bar and our control chart. Well, the second thing is that we want to calculate the average and R for each subgroup. So we want to see what the average of each subgroup and we want to see what R, which is the range for each subgroup is. Our third step is calculating the grand average. Grand average means you're taking the average of subgroups. Whatever the information that you obtained in step two, you just take the average of those values which will give you the grand average and the average R value. Well, right after that, you want to determine the upper and lower control limits for X bar and R chart. So let's just recap what upper and lower control limits were. Upper and lower control limits are the boundaries that help us to define the variation in the process. Think about it. If you if you want to draw a control chart, right? If you want to see if if something is under control or not, you gotta have an upper and you gotta have a lower control limit. Unless you have those two points, then you won't be able to tell whether your whether your system or whether your process is, is stable or shows some type of variations. Um so how do we calculate the upper and lower control limits? For the X bar, so this is only for the X bar chart. X double bar, which is a grand average that we calculated in step three, plus A2, A subscript two times R, okay? Well, actually this is R bar and this is R bar two. And for the lower control limit, we are only changing the sign. So use the negative A2 times R. This is how we calculate the control limits. And of course, we want to see the central limit because central limit is, is, is basically give us an idea of uh, how the distribution is centered. And our central limit is the same as the grand average. Okay, so this is for the X bar chart. Um, for the R chart, our upper control limit is equal to D subscript four times R bar, and our lower control limit is equal to D subscript three times R bar. Okay, and our center limit will be equal to our range. This is center limit, the range, which is my R bar. Okay, so the question is, um, I know how to calculate X double bar and R bar, but I don't know what A subscript 2 is, or I don't know what D, well, this is A subscript 2, but I don't know what D subscript 4 or D subscript 3 is. So what are those values? Are those values, uh, are those values something that I pull from a table or those values are coming from an equation? That's a good question. So for that, 
we are going to go back to uh, our table of control chart constants. Okay, so here sample size is located on the on the very left hand side, which is represented by the letter of M, and sometimes it's represented by the letter of N. Doesn't matter which one they use. Uh, we have A two. A two is our constant. Uh, we won't be using A3, so you can put a big X on A3 because we won't be using that information. Uh, these subscript two, uh, these subscript two is, is an estimate process standard deviation from average, and this is for range. And D3, the subscript three, is the estimate lower control limit for process range. And D subscript four is the estimate upper control limit for the process range. And we're not using, uh, we are not using B subscript three and we're not using B subscript, B, B subscript four. So you can, uh, you can either sketch those or you can put an X on those. I don't know how you do it, but we won't be using we won't be using A subscript 3, we won't be using B subscript 3 and B subscript 4, okay? So those are the constant values that we pull from a table. Okay, so now that we understand where those values are coming from, we can calculate our upper and lower control limits, right? Okay, so the next step is, you know, right after finding the upper and lower control limits, we want to plot upper and lower control limits on the chart. And after plotting control limits, then we can insert our X bar and R values for its subgroup in time series. And at the end of the day, we want to connect all these dots and to see whether the process makes sense to us or whether the process is capable or not. Okay, so we're going to go over an example where well, I want to make a correction here. So connecting dots means we won't be able to measure the capability of the process, but we will be seeing whether the process is in control or not. I take my words back. Process capability, process capability is another subject that we will go over. Again, connecting dots means we're going to see whether the project is in control or not. Okay, so this is our ex this is our example. Um, assume that we have a water dispenser system that filters water and fills bottles. And recently, we have noticed that the level of water in the bottles uh, change over time. And as an engineer, we want to collect some simple data from the process and the, from the process means from the water dispenser. And we want to create an X bar and our chart to monitor our process. If you look at the problem, our sample size here, our sample size here is five. So sample size, I'm going to delete this so that I can make some space. Our sample size is five. The column on the left, which is here, these are not your sample sizes. These are the event IDs. Okay, the event IDs. Event IDs means at 8 a.m., we collected five samples. This is the interpretation of this table. At 8 a.m. here, we collected five samples. And this is how our samples are outlined. Okay. So that means my first sample was 77 gallon my second sample was 88 gallon the, the next one is 81 50 and 49 so it varies but basically i collected five different samples at at 8 a.m and those are the results that i get from the process okay 
So for 9 a.m., you again take uh, five samples and you record your values. Then at 10 a.m., same thing, you know, again, the sample size is always the same. Uh, you collect five samples and this is the output of your samples. So I'm sure that you understand the logic. But again, sample size. Do not confuse sample size with the event IDs. Event IDs is not as same as the sample size. If I ask you what sample size is, don't tell me that sample size is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Don't tell me that sample size is 18 because sample size is 5. 18 is the number of event IDs. Okay. Um, so I, I hope that we understand this. Um, so if we go back to, if we go back to our, our procedure of how we draw the X bar in our control charts. First of all, uh, we want to, we want to find how many sub subgroups we have. Uh, if, if, if the subgroup is more than two and less than eight, then this is acceptable. If it is more than eight, we can use a different control chart, which is called S chart. Do you have to use the S chart? Uh, it's better. S chart will give you a more optimal result. So what happens if you use the, uh, X bar and R chart when the samples, when the subgroup sizes is, is more than eight? You can still get the result, but I don't know if that result or if that output is something that you desire. It, it may it may contain some false positives, okay? Okay, so first of all, we want to find how many subgroup, subgroups we have. So after verifying the subgroups, we want to calculate the average and R for each group. So I'm going to go back to my problem. The average and the range, right? It's asking us to calculate the average and R for each subgroup. So my first subgroup is what? This one. My second, I'm gonna do it this. My second subgroup is this one. Oh, before we talk about the subgroups, let's just go back to Procedure number one, it says, how many subgroups do we have? We want to see if it is more than two and less than eight. I see that our subgroup size is 18, right? It's 18 because subgroup size is the same as our event IDs. Okay, so didn't, didn't I just mention that we better use the S charts? I did, but this is just an example. Again, you may still use to export an R chart, but it may not be the most optimal solution in the world. The S chart will give you a better idea. The S chart will give you a better output than export an R chart when this, when the, uh, subgroup size is, uh, more than eight. But again, this is just an example. I just need you to understand the basic concept of control chart so don't pay attention to rule number one right now okay in fact i'm not gonna test you on that you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ask i'm not gonna i'm not going to be asking you questions like uh tell me whether this uh you know this x bar and r charts are suitable for this specific data set no i'm not going to be asking you any questions like this Okay, so let's go back to number two. Calculate the average and R each subgroup. Okay, so whenever I give you a question, I won't be giving you any of this information, okay? So the information um, that I put in red won't be given to you. So those those values won't be given to you, but you can calculate those easily. The sum means you need to add all these now all you need to add all these values. So from sample size one to sample size five. Why do we care about the sum of my values in 
five different sample sizes because I want to calculate the average, right? Average is important because that's one of the steps. Okay, so right after taking the average, then how do I take the average is 337 divided by the number of samples in my first subgroup and number of sample is 5. So 337 over 5 will give me 67.4. This is how we calculate the average. The range. Range is the difference between my maximum number and the minimum number. My maximum number is 81. My minimum number is 49. So we already covered those. I'm not going to go over those one by one. But again, the information that's that's put in red won't be given to you. You need to calculate those, okay? Okay, assume that those information, assume that those values are already calculated and we know what sum is, we know what average is, and we know what range is, okay? So let's go back to step two. Calculate the average and R for its subgroup, okay? So average is here and the range is here, which is my R, right? This is R, this is X bar. Okay, so it looks like I calculated all these values here, average and range. So that's good. Number three, calculate the grand average and average R value. Calculate the grand average. Grand average means we are taking the average of average. So the sum of our averages is equal to 1190.4. And if we take the average of those, the x double bar will be equal to 66.133. How did I calculate that? 1190.4 over the number of event IDs. <coughs> okay. And that will give you 66.13. Okay. So it's also, it's also asking me to calculate the R bar. R bar is the average of, uh, average of R values in my subgroups. Uh, and if, if you take the average, how do we calculate it? Uh, 532 over 18, uh, Will, will give me 29.55 and this is my r bar again this is my x double bar and this is my r bar okay very good it says determine the upper control limit lower control limit x bar and r charts okay let's calculate those For X bar chart, upper control limit, this is X bar is equal to, um, let me scroll it down so that you can see, X double bar plus A2 times R. So X double bar plus A subscript 2 times R bar. Okay, lower control limit is x double bar minus a subscript 2 times r bar. Okay, uh, I need to identify my center limits too. And I know that my center limit is equal to x double bar, which is my grand average. Okay, this is for the x bar. Well, let's just calculate those values first. Okay, what's my x double bar? It's given here. 66 points one three what's my a2 let's go back to our table a2 a subscript to our sample size if we can remember it was five let's just let's just see it again sample size is five because i have five samples one two three four five and i'm looking for the a subscript two value which is my constants for x bar chart. So that's the value I'm looking for, 
0.577 and my r bar is this value which is 29.55 okay so let's calculate the lower control limit 6613 minus 0.577 times 29.55 and my central limit was x double bar which is equal to 66.13 Okay, so my upper control limit becomes, I already made those calculations for you. Uh, it will be somewhere close to 82.5 and my lower control limit will be close to approximately 48.5. Okay, so upper control limit is given. Well, actually, it's not given. Upper control limit is calculated. Lower control limit is calculated. And central limit comes from our grand average. Okay, perfect. So let's go to the next step. Uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. All right, it says determine the upper control limit, lower control limit for X bar and our charts. So this information here, upper control limit and lower control limit, is for the X bar chart, okay? Because X bar chart is a whole different chart than our chart. So there are two separate charts, X bar chart and R chart. Those are two separate charts. Again, R chart cannot be represented in it x bar chart or x bar chart cannot be represented in an r chart okay so uh again number five says plot upper lower control limits and as well as the central limit on the chart so i'm gonna make this i'm gonna make this full page um uh, so our upper control limit is 82.5, our lower control limit is 48.5, and central limit is 66.13. And this is what we calculated in our previous step, right? So I just wanted to put all this information here because when we draw our control charts, we will be using those three values to identify our boundaries. Okay, upper control limit, 82.5. Let me choose a different color. I'm gonna be choosing blue. So 82.5, 82.5 is going to be locating uh, somewhere between 80 to 85, right? So this is, this is meant to be a straight line. Uh, Okay, and so this is upper control limit is 82.5. Again, normally we will be drawing all of our control charts by Excel, so it will be a perfect shape. But the reason that I went, the reason why I wanted to show you uh, the the paper version of the control charts because I wanted you to understand the basics of control chart. I, I want you to understand how those numbers are are used on a control chart because otherwise we could have used Excel and build our control charts, which in which you will do in the uh, in in your professional life. I mean, you won't be you won't be asked to build a control chart on a piece of paper. You'll be asked to build a control chart on Excel. Okay, so this is my upper control limit. My lower control limit is going to be here, which is 68, I'm sorry, 48.5. And my central limit, central limit is 66.13. So it's right above 65. Again, this is supposed to be a solid straight line. 
But anyway, this is central limit and central limit is 66.13. All right, very good. So that means we are done with step number five. And step number six says, after plotting control limits, then we will insert X bar uh, and R values for its subgroup in time series. So that means the question is asking us to insert or the procedure is asking us to insert those numbers, the average, right? We are not worried about the range right now because range is going to be a different chart. So average, average is here. Let me see if I can close that. Oops, nope, I want to close it. So average, average is here. So I want to insert all these values because I want to see how how the mean changes over time okay so at, at 8 a.m um i'll change the color to orange okay at 8 a.m our average is 67.4 okay 8 a.m is here and 67.4 so right in the middle, I'm going to put a dot. Uh, let's make it larger. Again, our value was 67.4 at 8 a.m. That was my average. And 67.4 is going to be located right in here. Okay. My second point, 73.8 at 9 a.m. 73.8 at 9 a.m. The next one at 72 at 10 a.m. So 72 gallons at 10 a.m. Again, those are just approximate points. It's not going to look perfect when you do it on a piece of paper, but it will look exact and precise when we do it on Excel. Okay, so 11, 65.4. 65.4, which is right below the average. So I'm going to say somewhere in here. 12, 68.6. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and locate 68.6 .6 at 12 a.m. Let's do two more then you can complete the rest of it. Again, the purpose is to show you how we insert those values on our chart. So 67 gallons at 1 a.m. I'm sorry, 1 p.m. 67. Again, those are just approximate points. And the last one, let's take this as, uh, as our last point, which is 71.2 at 2 p.m. 71.2. Uh, 2 p.m. Again, you can complete the rest of those points. Okay, you can complete the rest of those points and and you can move on to the next step. And the next step is what? The next step is connecting dots. Okay, let's go ahead and connect all these dots. All right, this is how it should look like. Again, I need you to complete all these points and draw your own control chart. So basically connect all these dots. And at the end, 
uh, you will see 18 different data points connected to each other. So how do I tell whether this process is in control or is out of control? Because that was the purpose. I see that there are some, there's some sort of variation in the system. So that means we don't have a straight line like this. The variation, the variation can be a normal variation or that variation can be a special variation. That we don't know yet. It seems to be a normal variation. To be able to tell whether we have any special cause variation, we need to identify whether our data points are aligned with the four principles of the Western electric rules, which we'll cover the next. So we have a Western electric rules and Western electric rules is basically helping us to identify whether our process is in control or not. So, okay, let's talk about the Western electric rules. Again, Western electric rules are helping us to identify whether our process or whether our system is out of control or not. So the first point or the first rule of Western electric rules is the outliers. Outliers means if there are any points beyond your upper control limit or lower control limit, that means if there are any points beyond your lower control limit or below your lower control limit or above your upper control limit, that means your system is out of control. And if, if this rule is satisfied, that automatically means that the whole process is out of control. So that means you don't have to you don't have to go over number two, number three, and number four and make sure that you know those are satisfied or not. It doesn't matter anymore because as long as one of those rules is broken, uh, as long as one of those rules is broken, that means uh, the process is out of control. Okay, so that was number one. I didn't mean to delete it. This is central. This is upper control limit, lower control limit. Again, if, if there are any points above your upper control limit or below your lower control limit, that means your uh, that means your process is out of control. Uh, the second rule says two out of three consecutive points plot beyond the two sigma warning limits. Okay, so if you look at the picture, we see that we have three points here. The first point is here, the second point is here, and the third point is here. And it's identified that two out of three consecutive points, uh, they are beyond the two sigma warning limit. So that means the process is out of control. Of course, to be able to see, to be able to see whether rule number two applies to your problem or not, first of all, you need to identify your sigma levels. Sigma level number one, which is basically sigma, two sigma, uh, and sigma and two sigma below and above the limits, right? Above the central limit. But we will not study, we will not study this in our uh, uh, in our class. So you don't have to worry about this. Just understand that two out of three consecutive points plot beyond the two sigma warning limits. That means the process is out of control. <sighs> Rule number three says four out of five consecutive points plot at a distance of one sigma or beyond from the center line. Again, the example is given on the picture. So if you have four uh, out of five consecutive points uh, plot at a distance of one sigma or beyond from the center line, uh, that means your process is out of control again. But in this class, we will not study this as well. Just make sure that you understand this, right? And number four, it says eight consecutive points plot on one side of the center line. Uh, let's give one example on this. 
This is our upper control limit. This is our central limit, and this is our lower control limit. Okay, so if if we have eight points below one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight below, if we have eight consecutive points below our central limit or above our central limit, that means the process is out of control. But again, it has to be eight consecutive points. But in this class, we are not worried about it. The only thing that I can ask you um, is the rule number one. I can give you a scenario where I indicate points outside of our limits, upper control limit and lower control limit. And if I ask whether the process is in control or not, you should be able to tell, yes, it's in control or no, it's, it's, it's not in control. Again, you all know very about the rule number one, but make sure that you understand rule number two, rule number three, and rule number four. So let's go back to our example. Um, I ask you to complete that X bar chart for our problem, and I already completed it on a piece of paper and just wanted to show you. Uh, so this is how the X bar chart should look like after you complete all the points, after you record all the given, uh, all the given averages of, of the subgroups. So based on our four rules of uh, Western Electric, we can tell that the process seems to be under control because I don't see any points here. I don't see any points here, 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 or here, right? Uh, so that, that process seems to be under control. And uh, even though I won't be asking you uh, the other three rules, uh, based on what I remember from those three rules, this process seems to be under control. So it's, it, it basically, it's not breaking any of those four rules. Um, okay, so our chart. So our chart is something that we did not cover yet, but our chart is the same idea as the X bar chart. Okay. There is no difference. The only difference is the way that we calculate our upper and lower control limits. So if we go back to our example, these are the formulas that we, uh, that, that we put on our screen for the upper and lower control limits. First of all, we need to find our constants and those constants are D4, D subscript four and D subscript three. So D subscript four uh, is equal to, one second, I already made those calculations so you don't have to do it. Just give me one second. Okay, so D4 should be equal to 2.114. Okay, so this is for the X bar. I'm going to delete that right now. So this time, we will calculate our control limits for the R bar for the R bar chart. Well, not the R bar chart, but the R chart. Again, this is going to be R chart. Okay, upper control limit. So upper control limit is equal to, upper control limit R is equal to D subscript four times R bar. For our sample size, we look at the D subscript four and D subscript four is equal to 2.114 times our R bar is equal to 29.44. How did I calculate 29.44? It came from here, right? This is our R bar. Our lower control limit is equal to D3 times R bar. So if we look up that value, 
on our constant table, we will see that the subscript three is equal to zero. So zero times 2944 will be equal to zero. Okay, I just realized that we have not finished this upper control limit calculation. So 2.114 times 29.44 is equal to 62.2. Okay, what's our central limit? Our central limit, uh, we mentioned that it's the same as the R bar. So R bar is equal to 29.55. Okay, so if if we look at our graph or if we follow, if we look at our chart and if we follow the procedures that we put in here, we, again, we apply the same procedures. We calculated the average, we calculated the average and R for each subgroup. And we calculated the grand average and average R value. Uh, we already determined the upper and lower control limits for the R chart. So it's time to uh, plot our upper control limit and lower control limit as well as the central limit on our chart. So our upper control limit turned out to be uh, 62.2 and 62.2. Oops, uh, let me see if I can get it back. Okay, 62.2 is already drawn here, right? So this straight green line is 62.2. First of all, I insert my upper control limit to the chart, which is 62.2. Now, my, my lower control limit, as we can remember, it was zero. And my central limit was the same as R bar, and R bar was equal to 29.44. So after plotting all this numbers upper control limit lower control limit and central line now i plot my my range for its subgroup okay let me see if i can divide the screen into two pieces or maybe three well two two is enough All right, I think that looks better. So the first one is 32, and 32, if you look at the graph, it's right here, right? Oops, that disappeared. The second, the second range for the second, second event is the average range for the second event is 18. So 9, 9 a.m., it will be down to here, right? So this is 18. So at 10 a.m., uh 10 a.m is going to what it's going to be 32. so again same procedure uh 10 a.m it will be right here 32. so right after you complete all these points uh you just connect the dots and you create your r chart and again based on the um based on the four rules of uh western electric uh, we can tell that this process seems to be in control as well.